Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, December 15th, so halfway through the month already, and uh, really good performance for the day. Kind of, uh, you know, interesting in terms of what we saw yesterday where, uh, you know, the beginning of the day, we saw a little bit of a move up in the indices, and then basically a fade for the rest of the day. Today was quite different. Uh, today was a little bit of gap and fade, and it kind of looked like for a minute that um, it was going to be a little bit similar to yesterday, and then you know all of a sudden we basically you know took off like a rocket to to the upside. So, uh, for example, if we want to look at the five minute here in the S and P. Right. Let's. I got the one hour up, and basically, we're we're basically back to yesterday's highs. By the way, so kind of interesting the way that that works. Uh, you know, you could see exactly what I'm referring to. It, it literally was feels like the opposite of yesterday after the after the gap up. Right. If we go to yesterday's price action, for example, whoop, right. We had the. Where are we here? I guess. Oh, this is the. This was the overnight session. Think or swim doesn't like for some reason when I try to go back like this um, and then point my my mouse. But I you could see what I'm referring to, you know, right where that 14486 number there is is in the futures. If I put my mouse over there, it's going to move. But we had that gap up and then we kind of sank right here and then sank the whole day. Here we did the the exact opposite. We kind of sold off there in the first half hour, found some support, and I I actually. Um, put this out a couple couple times in the room. You know, we, we were coming into the bottom of support, and then and then we took off to the upside. Let's just wait for my charts to adjust here for a second. The value is going is is off just a little bit there, but um, yeah. And then we're we're basically back to to yesterday's highs. <laughs> so just kind of funky tape. And really, where there was outperformance for the day was in the small caps. So that looks like a bad print there, but you know that actually took took out yesterday's highs, no problem. And here was this, you know, right around 11:30, this broke value for the day, and then 40, basically a 45 degree angle up and to the right. Very impressive for the small caps again, right? So we're looking at now in the small caps. You know what? What is the RSI in this? It's a 75. So we're we're getting pl pretty blistering. I call it a blistering pace uh, that we've seen in the small caps. Notice again, there's been really no pullback in the small caps at all, right? We've got a couple red bars in there too, but since the election, man, has it been uh, some strong performance? And I've compared this before. I won't do it again. Uh, yesterday's video was on the longer side. Uh, in yesterday's video, we, we talked about quadruple witching and the, me the mechanics behind quadruple witching. So if you're interested in that, take a look at yesterday's video. I kind of go through it and take some time, you know, walking walking through that. Um, and one of the things that I've said before is that, you know, there, there was this huge outperformance, small caps, uh, back at the end of 2016. So this looks very similar. And, I, and I've done it in previous videos. I won't do it in this one, but it's even a bigger move that we're seeing now compared to uh, post last election too but but just interesting I, I don't know what the what the reasoning is for that and sometimes you really don't need to know the reasoning um, you just know to kind of pick up on the uh, on the pattern so so very similar very similar price action to what we saw at the end of 2016 not all the same sectors remember last uh, last election it was the banks which are doing fine but big move in the banks last time big move in defense names right uh, you know a, a lot of things like that that were that were more based on um, you know what Trump was going to do now with um, with Biden. We've seen you know dif different groups in the small caps. A lot of health healthcare has been very strong. Um, obviously, alternative energy and um, yeah, all kinds of alternative alter alternative energy, electric, solar, all that stuff has been super hot. So um, the rest of the performance again, you know, basically if you looked at yesterday's. Uh, you know, summary of the sectors, it was flipped around, right? A lot of a lot of names had sold off from the open. Just the opposite, and really big performance here in the clean energy stocks. 
So if you caught some of these, which um, we certainly did, you know, I put on a trade and oh, by the way, before I get into the, the trades, I just wanted to go over um, again. I like to kind of have a little bit of continuation from what I shared yesterday. But the VIX, notice the VIX down, you know, big down day, down 7%. But kind of an inside day. So I'm staying, you know, disciplined right now in this market. Um, VXN was down more, down 4.5%. Um, I talked about the VVIX yesterday, yes, which is the volatility of the VIX itself. Also, take a look at that. Really not like a sell signal. You know, not that your people really use that as, you know, buy and sell signals, but, you know, in the VIX itself. But more, of, I use the VIX more as a barometer of what's going on. But, um, you know, so not really like a complete breakdown. Um, don't forget, we, we've got still a lot of events to get through. So if so, if this was a good trading day for you, uh, you know the way that I handled it is basically don't get super greedy, right? Sometimes our eyes really get wide when we see like all these things that are moving and so forth. But um, you know, I continue to kind of try to under trade a little bit, right? If if we go into the um, the things that I traded for the day. Um, I'm trying to, be, I mean, this is still a lot of trades, right? But sometimes I have to scroll, right? Yesterday was even less. Um, but you'll see a couple times where I really have to like, you know, for example, like last Wednesday was a lot of trading, right? You'll see all these, all these um, trades that I'm doing. So I've been trying to kind of tone it down a little bit just because I think this week is a tricky week. So I, I try to stick to the game plan as much as possible. Um, I obviously do participate in some day trades as I see, you know, if the tape is moving. But um, yeah, you know, this solar trade, this is again, you know, an, an, a, you know, trade that um, I put on on Friday, you know, and it's funny because sometimes people think that they, that they can't make money like in the ETF. Um, and they go in and, you know, I saw a lot of comments from the trading room today about, hey, this solar and it, sun power is up and JKS is up and uh, DQ is up decently. Um, it's the whole group, right? And it's actually, you know, for me, like, you know, trading some of these, I don't, tra you know, I'm not trading SPY and the Qs really that much, but something like this that really moves, you know, this thing's up 8% today. Right, the ETF, and I do feel that you have a little bit more diversification. Um, same thing with the PBW, right? You could try to find the winners and so forth, you know, the ones that are moving, but it's up 6%. I mean, look at the pattern in this thing, right? So if you don't want that small cap risk of like a name report, you know, all these names, of course, the last few weeks have been reporting secondaries and so forth. If you don't want that risk, like if you want to be in a swing trade and you don't want to get hit with, with oh, geez, this name is, you know, there's, they're having another secondary, right? NEO has had three secondaries in the last six months. Um, then just trade the ETF. They, they're, they're all in there. I mean, this is a really, really momentum, uh, you know, momentum ETF. So again, just, just a thought. Right. I know some of you are just you're just only trading um, single stocks and I get that. But you got fuel cell in here. You got blink charging, Neo plug, uh, LTHM, Sun Power. So this this thing moves. These are these are not, you know, oh, geez, I don't want to trade the ETF. But I'll tell you, um, <laughs> which I see that a lot of times when I put a trade on an ETF. I, a lot of times, um, sometimes, you know, people will, will take them, but I think that, you know, for the most part, there, there's a ton of, uh, single stock traders in our trading room, but Hey, this was a huge trade. Uh, this, uh, this solar ETF trade that we put on. And, um, I sent out this, the, uh, the setup, I talked about this setup on Friday. You know, what's crazy about this market too, is just again, how fast this, this is moving. I mean, up 8%, you know, for, again, like I said, an ETF is, is a huge thing. Um, but also just in single stock. So I tend to like, if I do something like that, you know, I played with a little bit of this XPEV that we put on yesterday. I was able to take some targets in this one. This Reggie is, was absolutely phenomenal, right? This is another one that, you know, since we called this one out on Friday, remember, um, you know, this was a name that I talked about. Uh, I, I was looking at this a week ago and it just never triggered and then the funny thing about this was on was on Friday, you know, again, a lot of the game that I talk about that, that you have to do, or at least that, that I do, and again, this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. But for me, it's a lot of just setting alerts where I where I care in names, right? So I had an alert on Friday set at 61, 
6130. And again, what's what's in, what's funny about this was I was watching this name um, early Friday on, right? So if we go if we go to Friday setups, do 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 do. do. And I had mentioned, um, you know, right around like 2.30 on Friday, I said, you know, because I had it in the watch list for last week, and it was one of those names that just, it wasn't down, it just didn't participate. But I said, ah, it didn't really work in this week's watch list. I said, still, I still have an alert on the break of value at 61.30, right? And then literally at 2.30, uh, that was, and then at 2.56, you know, like 30 minutes, somebody must have heard me because um, it broke out of value, and, and that's where I established um, my trade. And um, so again, you know, really nice to kind of catch this one. Up that early and um, where's where's this one so yeah I did take a few targets in this one um, 72 was the last one so again I mean you're talking about you know a lot of these uh, you've noticed that I have been trading a little bit more more stock um, and I tend to do that too when I think there's enough volatility in the stock. I mean, this is about a 20% move in a couple days, right? And it's just a little bit easier. It's just a little bit cleaner um, for me to trade the this, this stock. But, um, you know, I trade a combination of the two. And, you know, if something is not that high in implied volatility, right, it's not that expensive, I will trade the option, right? I've been doing that in PayPal as well. So, um, that is that XPEV hit two targets in this one again one that I just put on yesterday you know a five dollar move you know like a ten percent move in a day is just phenomenal right um, Sona was another big one um, this was a setup that we talked about that I mentioned earlier I got out of this one notice where this thing stopped right thank you value areas right at the top of value right so some news I think they signed some contract um, I was just looking for a quick trade in this thing, and it managed to really power through. So again, another setup um, from you know the the setups that we put together in our charts and swing trade setups in Slack. Um, again, I use one of the most advanced systems um, for our traders here at TTG, right? But it really helps things be you know super organized. So any trade that I get into. Um, a lot of the, the trades that I get into for swing trades, I've been sending out videos. I did not send out any videos today because um, I don't think I really – did I add a swing trade today? We talked about Apple pre-market. I said Apple had a chance to go, you know, this morning. And, and um, where did this line up in terms of Apple from what I sent out pre-market or set, set around right, right on the open? Right, so there, so you're getting there. One tw so if you're looking for, you know, a short-term target in Apple – um, again, you know, we went over Apple. I said Apple had a, has a chance, right? There was some news on Apple about iPhones and so forth, right? So uh, 180, 128. So we're almost there, right? So again, this is a lot of times how we're I'm basically lining up the trade and saying, hey, you got to you got to break a value, you got good momentum on it, break out of value at 125. Here's where you want to plan your exits, right? So there's another setup. Right. Um, Lowe's is one I did not take. I looked at a couple times today. Um, what, wow, it actually closed on the highs today. Um, I, you know, again, I'm being pretty selective in here. Um, again, why am I being selective? See yesterday's video. I'm being so, being a little bit selective because we got a big week. Right. Tomorrow we got Fed Day. Um, am I personally expecting anything from from Powell tomorrow? No, not much. But as I talked about in yesterday's video, he could of course say something about inflation that upsets the apple cart. And um, you know, so I, I tend no matter what, even though I'm not expecting any anything major from Fed Day tomorrow, I still play a little bit conservative. Right. Um, I've been having a great month, having a great year, and at this point. Yeah, I'm kind of saying at this point, maybe not push it too much in, into the, um, oh, wow, look at this. All right, there's a merger talk. Till, till Ray. Uh, people are, somebody, I'm sure somebody's got some stragglers on in that piece of uh, uh, Tillery. <laughs> so let's see if somebody has posted it already. There you go. Um, they're, interesting, there was this big uh, GRWG. So there's that. Um, let me throw this on uh, Twitter as well. 
I'm sure people are going to be very excited about that one. Let's see what these names are doing. So yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to the last couple weeks of the year and I'm trying to slow down a little bit, you know, even though this market is very fast. So let's see, let's see what this name is doing. Oh, there you go. That's all the way up to eight bucks. Congrats. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being a jokester. Remember this name was 300? Um, so that's, uh, that's on the tape. Right. Uh, someone just said in the room, so there's a chance if, if you, if you were that, that one soul who got long tiller at $300, you're telling me I got a chance. Um, so anyway, yeah, just to kind of round up, but Lowe's looks like an interesting play here. Uh, you know, breaking above value. And again, I'm seeing this in, in a lot of different charts. I'm also seeing, by the way, you know, some names today, right? If, if you look at, this, at, the, at the list of sectors, you know, performance-wise, um, not every group, you know, like the, the semis didn't move that much today. AMD was fine. But, um, you know, if you feel like you're in some names that didn't move, there's nothing wrong with some names consolidating a little bit. Um, by the way, here's GRWG, uh, which I thought was a good setup today too, right? Um, you know, what I like to do is kind of look at these one-hour charts and wait for the price to kind of recoup that trend. You know, a little bit of consolidation here, failure here, failure here. Again, short-term, you know, short-term stuff, right? And then all of a sudden this thing gets going and now is above that 200 period moving average. I look at these one-hour charts a lot to see these uh, short-term trend changes. All right, and then uh, finally, just uh, what, else, what else did I trade for the day? Um, that's it, and just was kind of managing trades there at the end of the day, but Sonos was nice. Um, I added back, you know, I started a, a trade yesterday in PayPal, and, you know, it got off to a great start, and then on yesterday's dip, on, on today's dip, right, I want to be buying some of these things where there's a little bit of a dip, um, I waited for this thing to make sure it stayed above value, and then and then I added to it a touch. Um, a couple other names that I'm watching for tomorrow: um, Microsoft. Right, I would keep an eye on this name. So you know, here is my thought on Microsoft. Whole bunch of calls traded for uh, what was it? February? I think it was the the February two fifteen calls. About let's let's see how many traded on the day. Uh, let's see, 14,000 of the, of the February 215 strike calls traded. Notice what this thing is doing, right? It's just smack in the middle of the value area for, for the month. So set an alert, 218. And if you really want to get a jump on, on a trade, if you think it's going to break higher, you know, you can start at what I always um, say that, you know, a trader can do is start a position when there's no signal, if, if you really want to get involved in it, um, or just set an alert, right? Just I, like I talked about in that Reggie stock, right? Set an alert at 218. Look at how coiled this thing is. Once it gets going, um, you know, this could really have a chance to, to, to move higher, right? This thing has been going sideways for a while. So set an alert at 218 um, and you can wait for it, right? Uh, I know that a lot of traders have you know, they have ants in their pants, right? They're like, I, I got to trade it. I got to trade it. I got to trade it. <laughs> and if you just wait for the signal, right? We've been talking about that for weeks in Amazon, right? I get for a while, I was getting a, a quest, two questions a day about Amazon. I'm like, just set the alert, 32.17, right? And then you don't have to watch it, right? You don't have to sit and painfully watch this chart that's been going, that's been doing nothing, um, set the alert at 3217 or 3220. And then if it triggers, then you go, right? But I think so many times what traders try to do is they try, they want to time it perfectly. Just sit with the alert, right? Because obviously like if, if Amazon gets going, right? And breaks out of, out of value. So I don't, I don't mind being a little bit late. I would be looking for a move up to here. Right, so I don't care about timing it perfectly, right? While it's in, while it's going sideways, right? And that's what the valuers, you know, give us, you know, a sense of if something is in the range and where to watch it, um, so that I don't have to sit there and watch Amazon all day long. Just set the alert in your trading system and forget it, right? Set it and forget it. 
All right, guys, so that's a couple things. Um, what else? A lot of calls today in, in what was it, um, STX? No, not, not STX. What is it? Um, just to kind of give you guys a couple other ideas for the, for the day for tomorrow. Um, if we go to our option activity, oh, interesting, big big Zillow trade that hit right right at the end of the day yesterday. Uh, so again, Zillow has already broken out, right? Um, my opinion on these on these break breaking out of value, right? Now it's a little bit late. Now I own this name in the TTG trend portfolio, but it's a little extended here, right? If I can catch it on the first or second day of the breakout, I'm all about it, right? But if it's the fifth or sixth day. I go on to the next one. Um, nevertheless, there is some in that. Here is the GRWG trade where we saw uh, puts being sold in a call spread. Um, here was some of the Microsoft order flow. Where's where's the other trades? I must I must be missing some of these trades. Uh, sometimes I don't always carry them over to this channel. But uh, not Seagate. What's what's the other? I'm drawing a blank here. Anyway, I'll think of it. Uh, there's another one. Uh, that's driving me crazy. But anyway, uh, that'll be to the end of today's video. If I figure out the symbol, I'll I will uh, I will let you know what it was. Oh, let me see if I can find it here. STM, that's what it was. All right, a lot of calls in this one. I don't know what what brought this name down. Uh, maybe it was an analyst day or some or something, but you know, we dropped from forty two bucks to all the way down to thirty five, and now there and there was call buyers through this move, um, and now we're seeing them again. All right, and then um, you know, finally, just a word about since it is uh, half the month is now gone, right? You know, here's my performance of my trading account through November. You know, I'll be up. I, you know, knock on wood. Well, so far I am up nicely um, so far in December. So you know, hopefully um, we'll continue this trend. Um, you could see you know my perfor my performance right on my Twitter page. You know, I'll continue to do that. Um, I think that. You know, I, I encourage more traders to do that on online. I, I continue to see very few traders. Uh, I'm starting to see it a little bit more, which is encouraging um, to show their per, per, uh, performance. But we'll be doing it every month, and you know, going forward. So um, we did it every month of of 2020, um, starting with January. And, um, you know, continue to do that trend. It's important to be transparent. There's a number of people who are being, you know, I think that are, you know, <laughs> that, that are more, you know, tweeting things to be deceptive, right, than actually what, what their performance is and, and how well they're doing. So this is our one, you know, trading program that we have, which is my, my trading account. Uh, we also have two other programs too, the watch list program, which um, has continued to excel. I think we're up close to 30% now for that program that we started in, in, um, in August. Um, and then of course we have the TTG trend portfolio, which is for, um, you know, for, for trader, for traders who want to have a, a, a portfolio to kind of hold rather than trade in and out. So uh, we've got three really nice programs. I'm super excited about 2021. And you can check us out here to, um, to sign up for the Tribeca Trade Group membership. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.